The truth. Two simple words, the truth. Most of us find ourselves often searching for what the truth is. We live in a culture that is driven by trying to discern or find the truth. And what we've done as a culture is we've taken the truth and we've made it a personal thing. In other words, my truth may be different than your truth, but it is my truth. And so I'm going to live by my truth. What I think is right, what I perceive is right, what I want to do, how I want to live accordingly. And yet the Bible speaks to us very clearly about the truth. And really helping us, especially as believers, recognize that truth is not an opinion. Truth is not a preference. Truth is not a certain set of ideas or concepts. Truth, the truth, is really based in three things. Three very simple concepts, three very simple things that all come to us from the Word of God. And we start by simply asking, who is the truth? Well, Jesus himself tells us who the truth is. In John chapter 14, verses 5 through 7, it says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, or how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am, and understand the words I am, go back to the original translation of the Moses conversation with God on Mount Sinai. He uses exactly the same words. When Moses asked God, God, what is your name? God said, I am that I am. Jesus uses the exact same words. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. Him. No, Jesus is clearly making a reference to the very personage or the place of who God is as our Father God. And He is proclaiming to us as believers, as non-believers, as whoever we are, that He is the truth. That the truth is centered on Him as a person, on His life on what he has done, on what he has accomplished. So who is truth? Jesus is truth. There is no other Jesus. There is no other option but Jesus. Jesus simply is the truth. Secondly, where is the truth? Well, Jesus himself is the truth, so he is where is the truth. But where else do we find the truth? According to the writer of Psalms in verse 19, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired, desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Where is the truth? It's in the laws and the statutes and the ordinances and the principles of God. That is where we find truth for ourselves. And every one of those truths will eventually point itself back to Jesus. See, if you want to know who the central character of this book is, it's Jesus. As the truth. On every page, you will find something that is going to point you to the truth or to Jesus. 
on every angle, in every chapter, in every verse, in every situation, you will find something that will point us to where the truth is, and the truth is Jesus. It's a simple concept, isn't it? And yet so hard to apply. So difficult for us to really put into play. Jesus being the truth and the Word of God pointing us towards the truth. Lastly this morning, who teaches the truth? Well, not lastly, but for right now, lastly. John again records for us in chapter 16, I still have many things to say to you, Jesus is speaking, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take of what is Mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are Mine. Therefore, I said that He will take of Mine and declare it to you. Jesus being the truth, the Word pointing us to the truth, the Holy Spirit teaches us the truth, given to Him by Jesus. Now, Jesus Himself says, the Spirit will take from what is mine, and He will give it to you. The Spirit does not come up with His own doctrine, or His own teaching, or His own way of doing things. The Spirit only does what Jesus tells Him to do. The Spirit only accomplishes in the way that Jesus moves the Spirit to move. The Spirit cannot move without Jesus. He cannot be separated from Jesus. He only can do what Jesus commands Him to do. He cannot speak just for Himself. He cannot offer you His own opinion or His own ideas or His own thoughts. He can only give to you what Jesus has already told him to give to you. In other words, when the Spirit is speaking to me, Jesus is speaking to me. When the Spirit is speaking to me, Jesus is speaking to me. Jesus is declaring to me what he wants the the Spirit to say to me. So he teaches me everything I need to know about the truth. And the truth is Jesus. Now, where does that leave us this morning? I believe that we find ourselves oftentimes in this, in this nation of ours, in our culture, in many, in many ways. In fact, we are surrounded by the idea that Some people have truth. Some people don't have truth. What is truth? What is the idea of truth? Universities are proclaiming all over the world today that we have the truth. We have certain angles on truth. We can present certain things on truth. You can go to the Internet today, and you can hear multiple people saying multiple things, and all of them are declaring to you that this is the truth. But is it? Just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true. Just because somebody says it doesn't make it true. Just because I read it doesn't make it true. And for us as Christians, there is a need for us, and I believe in my own life and all of our lives, for a spirit of discernment about truth, about what truly is truth, who is truth, where do I find truth, how am I going to learn about truth? What is the truth that Jesus wants to give to me for my life? And where am I going to find that? How am I going to receive that truth? I'm a firm believer that 
without the Spirit of God, you will not know the truth. Because the truth, the Spirit of God is going to give me what Jesus declares as the truth. And so to deny the Spirit of God is to deny knowing the truth or hearing the truth. Jesus himself declares to us that he is going to speak to us through the Spirit. And he's going to declare for us what is true. There's an interesting conversation in John chapter 18 between Pilate and Jesus. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 18, starting in verse 33. Jesus has been betrayed. Jesus has been turned over to the, to the, to the Roman guards. Jesus has been uh, given up by his own people. He has been turned over to the ones who can execute you. And he's having a private conversation with Pilate. And I think if we will really open our hearts today, we will see that this conversation is very similar to conversations that we have with Jesus or with our Father God on many occasions. If not, for some of us, maybe even daily. Starting in verse 33. Then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to, me, said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Has anybody ever asked Jesus, Are you really the king? Are you king over this situation in my life? Are you king over this scenario that's happening? Are you really king? I think if we're honest with ourselves, most of us have probably asked that question on way more than one occasion. Jesus answered him and said, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? In other words, did you hear this firsthand? Have you listened to this firsthand? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to them, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone. If you underline words in your Bible, underline the word everyone. Everyone who is of the truth Here's my voice. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? What is truth? We live today in a world that is proclaiming to us loudly from the rafters, from every angle, from every venue, from television to radio to newspapers to internet to whatever, that the truth is blank, and they fill in the blank. The discerning spirit says, what is truth? According to the Word, according to Jesus, according to the Bible, according to biblical teaching, what is truth. See, Pilate finds himself in this conversation himself desiring, wanting to know what is truth, and the truth is standing right in front of him. And he is blinded and unable to see, unable to hear, unable to respond unable to recognize that the truth, the real truth, the only truth, was right there. So let me ask you, what is your truth? What is your truth? 
See, because the answer to that question will determine how I live my life. The way I answer the question, what is my truth, determines the course and action of my everyday life. It, cho it chooses for me the direction that I will move. Again, I go back. Truth is not an opinion. Truth is not relative. Truth is fact. And that there is one truth. There is only one true truth. If you are paying attention at all in what's going on around us in this world today, and if you are look, reading your Bible at all, if you have read your Bible at all, then you would understand that right now, we have a desperate need in this world and in the church of Jesus Christ for truth. You would understand that things are lining up. And every generation, every pastor of every generation has stood in the pulpit and proclaimed the same thing. The end times are here. The end times are right on top of I could go back as far as you want, and every, because the reality is the end times are always right there in front of us, and it's only because of the grace of God that it hasn't happened. Because God is so gracious and so compassionate, so loving towards all of mankind that He wants all, as many as absolutely possible, before that end time happens, to come to the truth, to come to Jesus. To be able to change paradigms and to come to Jesus. To come to the truth, the one truth, the only truth. And it has to be something other than an opinion or a preference or something relative to how I decide I want to live. It has to be something more concrete than that. It has to be something that is eternal. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the only constant that we have in a world of absolute chaos. He is the only thing that we can hold on to as an anchor when everything else is falling apart. When all of my ideas have failed, when all of my perceptions have left me in the dark, when all of my thought processes have left me dry and, and, and struggling, when all of my wisdom and all of my discernment and all of my plans and all of my things have come to an end, Jesus is standing right there, arms wide open, saying, come to me, the truth. Let me be your truth. Let me change your life. Let me be your first and actually your final truth. Now, the scary thing for us is that once we make that choice, once we make that jump, once we go fully and completely to the truth, something absolutely happens in a powerful way. We now lose all control. You cannot truly follow Jesus as the truth of your life and still be in control. So once I go to the truth and I fully submit myself to the truth, 
something else happens. He truly becomes Lord and Savior of my life. I've recently had multiple conversations with multiple of you in this room about this very thing. We have been talking over calling here in the church and in all levels of leadership for quite some time. And it's the reality is that once that person is fully converted, fully following Christ, and they begin to sense that call of Jesus Christ on their life, the only way they're going to fully go into that call is, is if they lose control. Is if they really let everything go. You can't do it any other way. Because there's only one truth. And it's not based upon my opinion or my perceptions or my relative ideas. It's based upon Him. And only Him. Jesus Himself in chapter 17, John chapter 17 Praise this. He prays this, and I think this is an amazing prayer for, for his disciples. He's praying for his disciples, starting in verse 17. He says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Somebody say amen. Jesus is praying for us, is saying, Sanctify us by your truth, Father, which is me, and your word. In other words, that we are sanctified by the truth of Jesus and by the truth of his word. In other words, we are changed, we are made holy, we are created different, we are set apart. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. To be sanctified is to be made pure, to be made holy, to be made real, to be made like Christ. Now, all of us in our humanness, none of us in our humanness can be truly sanctified. We will never be able to be truly sanctified in our humanness. But through the truth, through Jesus, we are then sanctified. Because that's his prayer for us. His prayer for us is that we are sanctified by him, by the truth. That we are made holy, that we are purified that we are transformed. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, one of the most quoted verses in the Bible, says this, and again, Jesus is speaking. He's saying, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my, dis you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, if you are a disciple of Jesus, then you will know His Word, and His Word will proclaim you as a disciple, and because of that, you will know the truth, because the Word leads you to the truth, the truth being Jesus, and because you will know the truth, that truth of knowing Jesus will set you free. What will it set us free from? my own opinions, my own ideas, my own thoughts, what the world is saying to me as truth and what is really truth. Last week we talked about going back to go forward. And I will submit to you this morning that most of us, if not all of us in this room, have family tradition religious traditions that are not really truth. But instead they are based upon traditions of men, perceptions, ideas, and those things keep us from really knowing the truth. Who is Jesus? And many of us find ourselves in the church week after week after week after week, year after year after year after year, and we do not feel like we are free. In fact, we feel like we have chains 
on us. And we are carrying around all of this stuff that needs to be released. So that the truth, so that Jesus can really set me free. And set me free in a way that I will come to the truth and I will throw up my hands and I will simply say, whatever you want, that's what I'll do. And because I know the truth, the truth will begin to speak through the Spirit and He will hear from the truth and He will begin to speak through the Spirit, of, through His Spirit. He will begin to communicate with me about the things that He wants me to be about. And there is no greater freedom, and I submit to you that the world says being a Christian is like being in bondage. There is no greater freedom and there is no greater joy than fully and completely submitting myself to the truth and following the truth for the rest of my life. There is nothing that compares to it. You can't make enough money and you can't have enough things to even come close to what it feels like to know the truth. And the truth is speaking to me, and I am just going and I am doing whatever it is the truth is asking me to do. There's no greater freedom. There's no greater place a Christian can be. There's no, there's no other place that will even come close. If we're not careful, we may find ourselves like Solomon, who followed the Lord his whole life. And at the end of his life, he wrote the words, meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. But see, what happened for Solomon was, he started out really good. And over time, he lost his focus. And he took his eyes off the truth, and he started looking at the world. He started looking at the things of the world. At one point, he even says, I have not denied myself anything. Somebody say amen. In other words, he fully and completely indulged himself into the world. And he denied himself nothing. At the end, he was totally off track. totally off track. I invite you this morning to ponder this question. What is my truth? See, because the answer to that question will determine what you will go and what you will be and how you will live for the rest of your life. As a believer in Jesus Christ, it will determine what you will do. If you choose your own opinion or your own ideas or something, idea that's been passed down to you or something the world is saying to you is your truth, then that's how you will live. But if you choose the truth, the only truth, then He will set your feet on a path that will absolutely blow you away. And He is so caring and so gracious and loves me so much that He gives me the freedom to choose. I invite you to bow your heads this morning. And I invite you simply to ponder that question, what is my truth? Where did I get that truth? Did I come up with that truth on my own? Was that truth handed down to me by someone else? What is my truth? And where did I come up with it? Where did I decide that was my truth?
might have been a professor in a public university that really helped me form my truth. Might have been a pastor, might have been a friend, might have been a family member. And maybe today you have totally, you understand who the real truth is and where you can learn from it and where you can live in it. Or maybe today the Lord is knocking on your door and He's trying to come inside the door of your heart and help you to really know the truth. Father God, we thank you today for the Apostle John and for his writing. We thank you today for your own prayers for us. We thank you today that you have inspired us today through your word. We pray, Lord, that today would be an encouragement and a blessing to us. And as we go to ministry here, Lord, I pray that, that you would begin to speak through your spirit, that your spirit, the Holy Spirit would take from the very things that you're saying about each one of us in this room the very things that you want each one of us in this room to hear from you and that the Spirit of God, your Holy Spirit, would begin to speak clearly into our hearts here today. I pray for anyone in this room who does not believe that the Spirit of God exists, but has someone has somehow been taught or told that the Holy Spirit is, is not for all believers or is not, not present. I pray that that person, whoever those persons are today, that you would be gentle and compassionate with them and that you would gently begin to speak through your Holy Spirit right now into their hearts and into their minds and to their spirits what you want to take, take, give each one of us today. And then, Lord, I pray that if there is a response that some of us need to make here today, that we would simply respond to the truth, to your truth, to live according to your way, and that today would be a life-changing moment for us, that we would start today being changed by your truth, being changed by you. We ask you for that. We pray for it. We believe for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand up.